This morning, uh, we want to uh, move a little further than what we did on Wednesday night. Wednesday night, we, we mentioned that we are in the process of, of, of writing our purpose statement based on uh, the journey that we've been on thus far in our class. And that is, we started out by mentioning to us that in, in the process of our purpose discovery, that uh, there were five contexts when understood that can lead us to our, the reason why God created us. And with that understanding, we could, at the end, begin to develop a, a statement of purpose or purpose statements for the life that God created us to live. Now, on Wednesday, what we begin to do, and, to, and this morning, we're going to continue this process of connecting the dots, connecting the dots uh, in order to develop the practical means of developing a purpose statement, we must connect the dots. And what I mean by that is, we're going to go through the process of looking at all of the five uh, purpose discovery contexts and gleaning from them uh, the information that we study, and then putting that together. In the process of putting that together, each one of us should be able to, at that point, uh, develop a purpose purpose statement for our lives. Now, when we talk about the five contexts of purpose discovery, what we're talking about, in chapter three, we begin our study by talking about the author mentions that these five contexts of purpose discovery can be likened unto, he like, likened them unto five lights of purpose discovery. Do y'all remember the story of the rich uh, man who owned the ship that had a valuable cargo and the ship was out at sea and he was trying to dock the ship and he had trouble getting the ship into, dock, into the dock. And then on the dock there was this vagabond who was watching him and he began to give instructions to the captain of the ship and he instructed the captain of the ship in order to get the ship into dock, all he needed to do was to align the ring of the nose of the ship with these five lights that were on the dock. And in so doing, he would be able to uh, back the ship of valuable cargo to the dock, okay? So, what we're doing now is we're, we're connecting dots. So we, we ended chapter seven of the book. At the end of that was an assessment. This assessment had to do with the five different contexts of purpose discovery. Those five different contexts are what we see on our screen. The context of your creation, the context of your calling, the context of your clan, the context of your career, the context of your cross. And then as we looked at each one of those areas, what we learned is, and the, take, the big takeaway is, that's who you are. That's what your life consists of. And in examining the, these particular contexts is what we're hoping that you have come to see is that you begin to own the life that God has created. That you have begun to own the life that God has created. And so, in the conclusion of that, we're hoping that each one of you now are proud to be the person that God created you to be. When you look at the context of your creation, now understanding that you are a threefold spiritual being. And when you look at the context of your calling, when you look at now and having a better understand, a better understanding that your life is not by chance or happenstance. But God intentionally gave you birth. And when you got here, and when you were born, born here, your life was already complete in God. And now your life is a process of actually living out what God actually had put in you even before the foundations of the world. 
And then the context of your claim, we're hoping now that you have a new look, a new appreciation for the, the family system by, in, by which you were born. So much so that, that yeah, you can look at your life and your, the context of your family and you don't feel any regrets about or, 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 or feel shorthanded or feel as if though uh, you wish or desire that you were born in a different context than that which you were born in. Understanding that that unique context of your family is purposeful by God to fulfill the purpose that he has for you in your life. And then the context of your career, as we begin to explore that when you look back over your life, all of your uh, career experiences, whatever they might be, have a significant meaning in, its, in itself too, as it relates to uh, what God, how God has purpose to work out his purpose in, in your life to be an impact for, for him. And then the context of your cross, we didn't really spend a we didn't have an opportunity to spend as much time in this area as I uh, as I would have desired to. But the essence of this particular context is understanding that my life, that our life, that my life, the context of my cross, we all have a cross to bear. And as the author mentioned in this particular uh, text in, in, in the book, that the context of the cross can be likened unto understanding the context of your crisis. And by crisis, the context of your crisis, we mean the thing that has occurred in each one of our life in an individual way that has created the most, that has been the most challenging, in some cases the most painful experience. It's out of the context of your crisis, which becomes the, which becomes the cross that you have been called to bear, that your purpose comes. And we're going to look at how Jesus actually, here in a minute, we're going to look at how Jesus actually modeled that even in his, even in, in, even in his own life. And then we learn from these five contexts that, and I'm going to uh, uh, go into a little more detail. We ended kind of at this point on Wednesday. But in order to be able to go through the exercise of writing out our purpose statement, what we need to know is when we consider these five lights or five contexts of purpose uh, discovery, what well, we need to know they are designed to do three things. The first thing that, that these three context, or these five contexts are designed to do primarily three things. First thing they're designed to do is to help us to realize, to be conscious, to be aware. Second thing they're designed to do is to help us to recognize. It's one thing to realize something, then there's another thing uh, to recognize. And then the other thing that these five contexts of purpose discovery desire to do is to help us to renew, to renew our minds. Now, I want to mention each, each uh, three of these points in regards to what these five contexts are designed to do, to recall previous learning back to our, our present moment as we go about the exercise of developing a purpose statement. The first thing, when we talk about the first thing that these five, con these five contexts serve uh, a purpose for is to realize, is to realize I'm to realize me that I'm conscious that I am God's love man, that I am a threefold spiritual being. Well, what does that what does that entail? That means it re that I realize that I'm not just a human being having a spiritual experience, but I am I am in fact a spiritual being having a human experience. I don't look at my life from a, the perspective of being a human. But I now know that I am a spirit. I have a soul and I live in a body. Meaning then, I am a spiritual being having a human experience. Therefore, that shapes, my, that shapes the paradigm by which I live my life and understand my life. Second thing is, when we talk about recognizing, when we talk about recognizing, to recognize me 
means literally uh, to recall. It comes from the word, it comes from the word regain. It comes from the word recall to regain. To regain what? To recall to mind the, that life is a process of working out the expression and calling of your identity. You first of all must realize who you are, but then you also must recognize, you must recall again that what your life really is, is a process of working out the expression and calling of your real identity. Philippians chapter 2, verse 15, the Bible talks about, as a matter of fact, let's read some scripture here. Uh, get for me, Philippians chapter 2, verse 15. Philippians chapter 2, verse 15. And then, while somebody else is there, I want somebody else to be ready to read Isaiah chapter 46, verse 8 through 10. We're going to uh, uh, read Philippians chapter 2, verse number 15. Somebody uh, has that verse and ready to read. That you may know to become blameless and harmless. Uh, Paul said that you may know to become blameless and harmless. Read. Children of God. Children of God. Without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Okay, read. Among whom. Among whom. You shine. Among whom you shine. As lights in the world. As uh, uh, among whom you shine as lights in the world. Read. Holding fast. Holding fast. The word of life. The word of life. So that. So I, that. I may rejoice in you. That I may rejoice in you. The day of Christ. The day of Christ. That I have not run in vain. That I have not run in vain. Or labored in vain. And labored in vain. That's not the verse that I'm looking for. Uh, Philippians chapter 2. That's Philippians 2. No? Okay, Philippians 1 6 is another verse, but Philippians 2. Uh, text says, I didn't read, um, text says, for it is God. Who? Thirteen. Verse thirteen. Yes. Okay. Somebody read verse thirteen. For it is God. For it is God. Yes. Who works in you both? Okay. Now notice what this is the text. For it is God who does what? Who works? Who worked? Who's working? God. And where is He working? In you. Okay. For it is God who who's work in you. Now notice the work of God. What is it? What is the work of God in you? Read. Both to will, both to will, and to do, and to do for His good pleasure. For His good pleasure. Again, what we're talking about is discovering God's purpose <coughs> for our life. And whatever our purpose is, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta remember that our purpose, our purpose in life is only, uh, is only brought forth from the purpose that God has. And so notice this, God is working in us. We must recognize again that the life that we live is a process of working out the expression and calling of your identity. Okay? That's what we just read in, in Philippians actually 2, verse 13. So therefore, we need to understand that each one of us are being processed while making progress. This is a process. Your life and mine, living out God's purpose, is a process that God takes us through. We are all being processed. And there is no progress without, first of all, being processed. I meant to have a slide up, up, up to remind us. Y'all remember in the very beginning when we had the, the different vegetables? Y'all remember that? Vegetables wreck was uh, designed for us to understand that all of us are being processed by God. And it also, it also was designed for us to realize that inwardly there's something at work in you. And that which is at work in you is God himself. Bringing out of you and me the very thing that he created us, us to be. And so, my life just like the seeds in that bag, it's already finished. 
It's complete. The only thing that, 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 that the only thing that's necessary to bring it into manifestation is the process of God. These five contexts need to be viewed from that perspective. Each one of the five contexts is, is, is the process by which God processes our life to bring purpose in our lives. And so, anybody got any questions about that? Anybody have any questions? And then the last thing I want us to understand is we must also remember that this process that we're making reference to is that of going through having our minds renewed. It's a, it, it's a process of going through having to have our minds being renewed. Okay? Because the spiritual warfare that we all are engaged in in terms of redefining who I am, that is, what we mean by that is when we talk about spiritual warfare, redefining who I am between the old self and the new self consists of what we see up here. You must understand that the warfare is a warfare between putting off the old self and then putting on the new self. The gap between, and that means that's the gap between who you are and who you are supposed to be. Like you're learning now in terms of what your purpose is. You're seeing your life as it is, but you're also learning in terms of what God said your life should be. And in order to go through that process, you have to do it by having your mind renewed. I ask us to uh, have turn in your Bibles to Isaiah. I'm going to go back to that text right now real quick. Isaiah chapter 46. And look at verse number uh, 8. Y'all remember this text? Remember this. Notice, notice what Isaiah told, told uh, Isaiah saying here. He says, "Remember this. What is it that you're to remember? Read and show yourselves men. And show yourself men. Read. Recall to mind. Recall to mind. What is it that you are to recall to mind? Oh, you transgressors. Oh, oh, you transgressors. Those who have forgotten. Those who have transgressed. Transgressed." God has gotten off the original path that God has created for you. Read. Remember the former things of old. Remember the former things of old. For I am God. For I am God. God. Remember, and he says this three times, this is what you ought to remember. You ought to remember, first of all, that I am God. There is nothing that any any of us can do separate and apart from our relationship that we have with God. So first of all, remember that I am God. But not only, what is it about God that he, God wants us to remember? He says, remember the what? And, and there is no other. He says, remember the former things of all, and I am God, for there is none other, and depending on what translation you read for him, there is none other like me. There is none other like me, God. And what distinguishes God from any other deity or supposed deity? He's going to tell us that tree. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end. God says, I am, there is no other like me because I declare what? The end. The end. From the, beginning. from the beginning. In other words, go ahead and read. And from ancient times. And from ancient times. Things that are not yet done. Things that are not yet done. Saying my counsel shall stand. That my counsel or my purpose, it will be the thing that will stand. And I will do all my purpose. And God, ultimately, we need to understand, he 
does, he's sovereign, and he, through his sovereignty, will find will have the final say so about everything. I will fulfill my good pleasure. But here's the thing that we want to take away from, 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 from that as it relates to us developing our purpose statement. We cannot lose the uh, we cannot lose or fail to remember that the life that we have, God completed it first and then we started. So there's nothing that has happened to us in our life that God hasn't already accounted for. And the purpose that God has for you and me has already been completed. And what we are in the process of doing is actually coming, in, coming into an experience of what God has already done. Remember that God, that God is a God who declares the end from the beginning. Now, so here's the, here's the challenge. The challenge is living out our life with that understanding. And the only way that we can do it is by having our minds renewed. We, we can't think in terms of with the mind of the whole self. We have to think and see our lives how from the finished work of God and being already complete. And then process the things, the circumstances, the circumstances in our life is a means or process by which God is taking us through to fulfill our purpose. Here is the thing, here is the kind of mindset then that you gotta have as you look at the five different contexts and you get to own your life. Because in owning your life, as we mentioned, that means these five contexts represents your story, your life story. It's an owning and it's, it's an owning and accepting everything about you that gives God glory. It's from the context of who you are and everything that you've been through. That's the only way that your life can actually glorify God. Okay? And with that being with that being said, here are the challenges. The challenge is thinking with a renewed mind. Thinking with a renewed mind. What does that mean? That means it's, a, it's understanding that the areas where you've been the most attacked is the area where God is actually called. The areas where you've been having the most challenges, that's the area where God is actually calling you into. It's understanding that the quality of your opposition or your opponent, so to speak, you remember David and Goliath? It's an indication, it's a revelation of the fact of who you really are. Notice the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, right? 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there is no temptation which is what? Y'all don't know the verse? There is no temptation that is common to you which is what? There is no which temptation is, that is taking you. There is no temptation. Which is common, there is no temptation taking you such as common unto what? Man. Now notice. And, and but God is what? Faith. And notice what we learned in James chapter 1, a while back, James chapter 1, verse 4 or 5. Count it all joy when you fall into various temptations. Why? Why count it joy when you're falling into various temptations and are confronted with various trials? Because the indication with a renewed mind informs you that your greatest opponent is a revelation of who you really are, your true identity. So if you're really struggling with something, what that is an indication is that it's an indication of the capacity by which God has created you to overcome the thing that you 
may be resistant or the thing that you may think that is too much for you to have. There is nothing, no temptation that God puts on you that he don't already know that you have the capability of actually overcoming. You have to now, see here's the point where we shift, we, we shift in our, our thinking and it has to become our reality. So when we talk about recognizing, we're talking about having a, a consciousness or a state of existence where this is how I operate. It controls the way that I think about everything. In other words, I, 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 I realize then that it has to do with my own self. You remember the last couple of classes that we talked about the difference between intrapersonal communication and interpersonal communication? A renewed mind has to do with the, the notion of intrapersonal communication. It realizes, realizes that as a spirit being, that I'm constantly communicating, first of all, with myself. The quality of my communication with myself, I realize that I'm constantly having to go through this process of self-talk. I'm, I'm constantly talking to myself. But the question is, what is the quality of your talk to yourself? Mm. How much deposit thinking are you having with yourself? How much withdrawal thing is going on within yourself? You know how I can you know how you can measure which how much inter, how, how positive of interpersonal communication is going on with yourself? Y'all wanna know? You look at your interpersonal relationships. You know why some people can't get along with people? They can't get along with themselves. <laughs> They're not getting along with themselves. It, it's a true sign. That's exactly what it's saying. Not only do they not love themselves, they have not come to understand who they really are. If I'm having constantly having interpersonal relationships with others, conflict, it's, a, it's an indice of each one indice of the internal conflict that I'm really having with myself. And if I go back, if, if I become conscious and aware of, my, of the kind of talk that's going on with me, and I'm able to actually monitor that, it's amazing in what your life will do. And so, now I want to I want to I want to mention this one other thing. Having a renewed mind is also understanding that you are a unique expression of who God called you to be, unlike any other thing that God has created, any other person past, any other person present, or any other person that will ever, ever be. The beauty of the call of salvation is that it's individual. The beauty of the call to purpose, the beauty of that is that it's, it's all individ it's, it's individual. To know that you are an individual, as a unique individual, just like the illustration that we use with the with the with the seeds and the vegetables. With that comes, you have a unique presence in this world that's unlike anybody else than anything else. Part of your unique presence, you all know that we all have a signature. I mean, we all know that uh, like when it comes to our thumbprint, there's no other or fingerprint. No other human being on earth. Did y'all find that amazing? That I mean, nobody before you, nobody coming after you, will ever have a print like you. But you know what also is, is unique in that too? You also have a unique voice print. 
You know, science is beginning to, you know, we could be coming up with all kinds of technology like on your device. You, now they're looking at, uh, they're looking at uh, ways of setting past codes of, uh, of identifying identify people. They got your eyes that they're using now, they're using your thumb. But do, do you also know that you have a unique, unique voice? In other words, there's nobody else's voice in the world like you. When you understand your uniqueness in terms of your purpose, God begins to utilize your life in such a way that you begin to speak with your life like no other person. <coughs> Let me hasten here. Let me, so, the fruit that you produce or the work that you do as we, do, as we begin to define our purpose statement is an extension of who you are. Your purpose, your work will be so unique it, it, it represent an extension of who you are, being that you are God's workmanship that we learned in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. The work you are called to do won't be redundant. The work that you are called to do, your purpose, it won't be redundant. It will be unique to you. That means that's why you are, in fact, an original. You're not a duplication. You have an original expression and an original contribution that you are called to do that comes as a result of the fruit. Your uniqueness, your work, your purpose comes as a result of your unique walk with God. That's how it's brought forth. That's why when we, we go back to the very essence of things, your single most important relationship with God is that's why that's critical. Because it's in that relationship with Him and then walking out with Him that we actually produce the fruit of our unique purpose in God. Okay? Now, the thing that we're going to do the next two classes is this. Everybody should have actually begin to answer the questions that's found on page 72. I mean, the, the context is, the five different contexts of 72 and 73, okay? And Wednesday, what we're gonna do is turn over to page 112. And here's the thing that I want you to come to class uh, ready to engage in. On page 113, on chapter 12, the five steps in writing a purpose statement. We're going to engage in that as a class. Page 112 and 113. And what I want you to do, especially on page 113, how to write a purpose statement, here's what I'm asking you to come prepared to do. The first step to writing a purpose statement is to answer the following questions which deal with the five contexts of the purpose discovery. Answer this question. What is the, con the context of your creation? Question number two. What is the context of your call? Question number three. What is the context of your claim? And so forth. Uh, questions four and five. Now, you can go back to each one of the chapters, chapters three through seven, and just answer those five questions. And when we come to class, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to work out coming up with your own purpose statement. Now, understand this exercise is a process. Don't overthink. Don't overthink the, the, the questions. And if you have some questions about answering the question, that's fine. When we get into class on, on Wednesday, we'll spend time addressing any of the questions that you have. But the most important thing is, when you come, try to have as many of those five <laughs> questions answered when you come. And then we're going to go, we'll go through the exercise of actually answering those questions for you. Anybody have any questions? 
uh, about anything, the the assignment that we're to do, or any questions about anything that was said this morning. And I'm going to use myself. This is my this is my purpose statement as I mentioned on Wednesday. I'm going to show us how I went about using the, this framework to come up with, with that. Okay? Those five different contexts. All right. To our visitors, we appreciate you so very much being with us uh, all the way from Texas. Let's get ready to go into uh, 